Hi, I'm Cheryl Townsley, and this session is going to be all about getting clarity on your values so that you can truly live them. The first thing I would like for you to do is to help me there. I want you to take your current age and the age you desire to live to. So let's say you desire to live to 95 and maybe you're 50. So we're going to do some high level math here. 95 minus 50 is 45. So when you look at that, would you like the next 45 years to be a continuation of where you are right now? What kind of a picture does that paint for you? I really want to capture your attention because let's say your life is really going quite well. Do you want it to be where it is for the next 10, 20, 30, 50 years? Or is there more in you than is currently come out? Or for some of you, this might be a really trying season of your life. And what if you didn't know how to change where you're at and you stayed in this place 10, 20, 30, 50 years? Well, just as those hands indicate from youth to the oldest of ages, whatever that might be in your life, wherever you are in the continuum, the decisions you make each and every day determine the continuation of your life. And we're going to talk about how and the why that allows all of this to line up with what you would like to create. Because unfortunately, some people are sitting just like this little faceless guy, wondering, why can't I create what matters to me? Maybe you've heard someone say, if you have a big enough why, you can accomplish anything. So you set your great big goal. And you think you have a great big why in a week, two weeks, three weeks. All of a sudden, you realize you're just continually doing the same thing over and over and over and you sit there and wonder what's wrong with me? Is there something wrong with me? Did, did I pick the wrong goal? Do I have the wrong desires? Is, is there something going on? And the frustration leaks out. It's like an energy leak throughout our whole life. It impacts finances, time, relationships, health, weight. We're just in this mire of frustration or even if you're not really frustrated you're not at your best because every decade should be better than the next. Ah, use that should word. We've got to get rid of that. Every decade has the potential to be better than the last one. So what is it that we would like to do? Well, in order to make this connection happen in this session, it's really important to understand that you have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. Now, for those of you who have been through some of my other webinars, this is a review, but you can't hear it too much. So let me explain this, because this little piece is critical. All of the, the science that's coming out right now about the brain fully substantiates that not only is this true, but that our mind is what drives our brain, the physical brain, and our brain that drives our physical chemistry. So a lot of things that go on in our health, our finances and relationships, that physical is being run by our mind and 95% of our mind is subconscious and we're not aware of it, just like the iceberg. So for sake of discussion, it's actually pretty true, your conscious mind is what happens at the front of your mind. It's where you make decisions. It's where your, your willpower, your logic, it, it's where plans, dreams, and desires. But 95% of your waking hours for sure, and a lot of your sleeping hours, are back there in the back of your head, the subconscious. And that's where a lot of tension and stress headaches are. It's a critical part of the body because it's right there where the head and the body connect. And this subconscious mind is what runs your beliefs, it runs your habits, it runs your reactions, your default in the moment. How do you react? What do you do when the trigger gets hit? That's what your subconscious mind runs. And for the sake of our discussion, we're going to call that the RAS. The RAS is the reticular activating system and it's part of the brain stem and it gets programmed between the third trimester that your mother was carrying you 
through age seven. That RAS has been programmed not by you, by other people. And some of those people aren't even living. And some of those programs you're not even aware of. But the results and fruit of those programs show up all the time. We're going to talk about how that connects and ties in with values um, tonight because I really want you to understand the difference. So this RAS, it has a purpose. It's not designed to hurt you. The purpose of the RAS, as God designed it, is to be the security system for your, for your being, for you as a person. So when the RAS sees or perceives something as a threat, red alert, red alert, red alert, the alarm goes off, and all the security measures go into place for you to either fight or run. That's the fight or flight. That drives stress hormones. It drives chemicals in the body. It actually drives the neural pathways in your brain. And that programming is all done by the RAS based on your first seven years. But here's the good news. Those programs can be rewritten. And we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight and ways that you can continue to progress through this. Because the more you change that programming, your default behavior changes. You can actually have an automatic behavior that serves you instead of the programs that made sense to a three-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old. Okay, so life happens after seven or maybe even before seven, and you have these dreams and desires. Maybe it's to be on stage, or, or maybe it's to be a great artist. Maybe it's to be an amazing mom, or to have this big business, or maybe it's to impact people around the world with your giving. You know, I remember one time <laughs> I was out in the, I, lived, I grew up on a farm, and I was out in the pasture practicing my trumpet, because I had this dream of being a Louis Armstrong and being able to play jazz and great music. And um, at dinner that night, my mom, I remember asking my dad how the cows got out that night. And she was referencing my great trumpet playing. You know, and besides in band, my band teacher said, you know, Shirley, you don't even really have the lips to be playing the trumpet. I don't think you'll ever be a Louis Armstrong. But you know what? I still had a desire to make great music. And music actually is is showing up in my life in words, being able to have words flow to paint a picture to be able to impact lives. So there was a, a root to some of my very key values very early on. And each one of you have dreams and desires and aspirations, but what happens? Life, somewhere, high school, 20s, 30s, 50s, 60s, life happens to every one of us. And sometimes it happens every decade or every few years. And you wonder, what in the world happened to those dreams? Did I not have a big enough why? Am I just the one that's not supposed to ever experience my dreams and desires? Is life just meant to survive and get through? If you're really honest with yourself, have you ever had some of those questions or thoughts go through your mind? Well... Those thoughts are creating neural pathways, and sometimes we just sit there and scratch our head and go, you know, that's just life. Well, when you're in that state, the RAS default programming is running 95% of your life. Now, in the More Than Enough series that we just finished, one of the things we talked about is the ability to honestly assess where you're at. Not judge it, not make it good or bad, but really be able to assess and see what kind of fruit you're producing and is that fruit what you want. But you know what? If you just look real simplistically, the dreams and desires that are in your heart. I want to give you a key concept. This will be new for the people who've been on all 12 webinars. Our heart is where our values come from. This is what allows us to live our life being truly who we are. Our heart doesn't have a RAS. Our brain has a RAS. And when we get that RAS and heart and values all connected, some amazing things happen. But when you don't know about any of that, this RAS, this default programming, 
overrides every one of your dreams, desires, all these great things you want to accomplish that you go to seminars and meetings and church and, and whatever and you get inspired and you're so excited and then life happens and default shows up and it trumps all those desires and all that inspiration. Well, isn't it time to know that there is something so easy that you can do to change all of that? I love this picture. It reminds me of, um, it's not quite the same, but several cruises that we have taken. And I remember on some of those cruises, we took our rebounder. There's nothing more interesting than rebounding on your deck, on the ocean, on a big ship. It's really pretty cool. Good thing is I don't get any motion sickness. But here's what I want you to see in this picture. I want you to begin to understand that when you're looking at that view, there is the below the bar and above the bar. And for most people, it's the same view. But there's an invisible wall called the glass right below. And when that glass is really clean, the view looks the same. Here's the difference. Above that bar, it's totally open. And your values allow you to respond and shape your life. I'm going to spend a little bit of time here because this is a really key concept. Your RAS simply reacts. And it will loop. It will take you nowhere. It can be changed. But for right now, it reacts. So here's what it's like. How many of you have ever seen a bird really clean sliding glass door and what does the bird do? Thinking it has an open pathway, it flies right into the door. Not a pretty picture. This is what life looks like when you have dreams and desires and the view looks amazing of what you want to create. When you have default programs that don't serve you, who God really made you to be, then that's like the lower half. It's like the invisible glass wall that you just get excited and you're moving and moving and then you crash just like that bird. And it's like, what happened? What happened? That's the invisible wall. That's the RAS and the default programming. On the other hand, when you get clarity on values and the principles that I taught in the AHA, the Foundation Mentoring Series, when you learn how to progress through this, to really get congruent with what you want to create, that's like having that open vista and you can choose your responses, you can choose what you can do, because you realize that choice is in your hand and when you have the simple little strategies, as simple as breathing. So let's take a moment because some of you may have had a stressful day and we're just going to breathe. Breathe in and out. Do it again. Breathe in. You know, no matter how many times I do that, and I do it not only in webinars, but with clients, um, throughout the day driving, because I can feel myself settle, I can feel my muscles relax, my voice relax, my eyes relax, my face relax. Breathing is one of those simple little strategies to make sure that you are operating from values going through the process so that you can stay in touch with connecting to that view that represents desires and dreams and goals, inspiration. So how can you know where you are? When you're moving forward, do you feel like you're hitting this invisible wall and you loop somehow and you just keep repeating certain patterns? That's the rest. If you're moving forward and even if there's a bump, you have the skills to get back on track with your values and what you want to create and you're moving forward. This isn't about judging. It's not about your identity. It's about creating what matters to you. Invisible wall or an open vista. So, let's move forward here. Let's look at your RAS. Your RAS, as we've already talked about, drives all of those things listed there. Your programs, your behavior, the default. It can be re reprogrammed to serve you if you know how to do it. As you learn to live your values, everything that is in your heart that desires to be expressed and lived and passed on to others, significance, 
that all is connected through values. And when your values are clear and you're connected to them, which means you know what they are and you can describe them and you know when you're operating in them, then you can choose your responses, your decisions, and your behavior. Wouldn't that be a phenomenal life? When you're choosing what you most want, creating what matters, and it's not about willpower, it's not about a bunch of shoulds, because remember, shoulds are an obligation, it's a debt, and it doesn't create anything. It's, it's a negative energy. So what if, what if you could create what matters, and it was easy, lined up with your values, kept you moving towards that wide open view, and it was easy. That's what being connected to your values is all about. Once you understand your values and you're connected to them, not should values, but values that come from your heart that are a part of you, and everybody's is unique. When you have clarity on that, you can begin to use those values to reprogram your RAS and create completely new default behavior. Now let me just give you a little example of that in, in my own life. You know, I have a, it's not one of my top values, but one of my top ones is integrity. And for a long time, I thought that meant there had to be perfect order in my life. And so everything in our home had to be perfectly done from how it was vacuumed to how things got put away. And, and when that didn't happen, aha, my reaction was to get upset at people because they weren't doing A, B, C, D. You know what? Integrity is very much a value in my life, but I have learned that it didn't look like the way I used to define it. And it no longer is creating reactions that separate me from other people. So we're going to talk about this clarity of value so you really know what it means, not as a should, not as a mean to judge people, but as a way to create what matters to you. And being able to let that then create default behavior so that if something is out of order in our home, I can breathe, relax, and know I have an amazing family. Now that may not sound very big to some of you, but if you know me very well, that's a big deal. And this is such a tiny little example of how this can infiltrate all of your life. So how do you go about discovering your values? The ones that really do come from your heart and not your brain. The brain would simply reveal all the default programming. The values are coming from your heart. And they do something when you start to get clarity on them. So how do we go about identifying that? Well, let's first of all define values. Values are not your purpose, they're not your calling, they're not your giftings. Those are all things that are the what you do. Like you may have a gifting as a teacher, or you may have a purpose of, you know, healing people. You know, your purpose is over your whole life. I believe callings can change in different seasons. And then you have giftings, things that are just easy for you. Like some people are just born athletes. That wouldn't be me. Some people are born athletes, and they just have an athletic giving, a gifting. There are people that are born with a musical gifting. That would not be for us or me, no matter what he says. The gifting is it's just easy. It's easy. You know, I have a, a gifting of taking tests. Tests are easy for me. But that's not my values. Okay, I, I just want you to know that purpose and calling and gifting are more of what you do Values are the how and the why. And the values, when you connect with yours, they light up your eyes and your voice. When I've coached people on getting clarity around their values, it usually starts with the should values, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And they're like, well, it's this and this and this. And it's like they just read something out of a book and there's no life on it. Once we start going through the process and they get really, really honest, there is always life on values. You, your eyes will light up because it means something to you on the inside. Values do, or at least they can, drive behavior and decisions when the values are speaking louder than the RAS. It also is what allows you to do 
honest assessment of where you're at and where others are without judging. Judging is almost always about somebody's identity and if they're right or wrong. When you have clarity of values, what you are able to do is honestly assess the result and fruit, not the per person. Can you imagine how that could transform marriages or families or teams or businesses or churches? If we had the ability to honestly assess fruit instead of the people, and best of all, values define who you, who you are because they are coming from the heart. You can't fully be who you are if you're not connected to your values. At best, you'll survive and you may do good, but you won't do your best and do well. So, are you connected to your values? And maybe you're just feeling a little bit frustrated like, great, I've been through all kinds of classes, but none of my values lit up my eyes, and none of them felt like life. They felt hard, and it felt like something I should do. Well, good news. We're going to dispel all that tonight. Here's one of the things I want you to do. We're going to have some little assignments tonight, and you're not going to be able to do this in the moment, but you can write it down. What I want you to write down first is become aware of triggers and reactions. What sets off your fear? What sets off anger? What do you find that when something happens, immediately you go, I should do this, 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 and this, or I need to go fix this person or this problem? Or what absolutely is such a big trigger that it paralyzes you and you don't even know what to do? It just shuts you down. Maybe looking at the programs that your family had in your early years. Or if you're like me, there's a lot I didn't remember. But when I allowed myself to reflect without any judging, I could see certain patterns that were in my family, my grandparents, um, because they're, you know, if nothing else, because they were German. I realized that in a German family, you do everything right, and if you haven't seen anybody for 30 years and they come in the door, you go, hi. I thought that was normal. I didn't know that was a pattern. Well, and then I was around people who were Italian and Greek, and if you haven't seen anybody for two days and they walk in the door, you're like, well, hi, and there's big hugs. That was foreign to me. It's a pattern. It's not good or bad. But as I was learning in this area, I realized that was a pattern that our family had. So what I would like for you to do is write down these questions. And during some reflection or journaling time over the next days, weeks, it's your choice. It's your journey. What's true for you? Because once you understand these reactions, and as you get clarity on your values, you can recognize in the moment, is it your RAS or is it your values that's driving your behavior? That alone is an amazing insight. You know, I'm pretty clear on a lot of these, and there's much, much more I know that I can learn, but I've spent time and I'm aware of that, and I've learned some things I can do to interrupt, because sometimes I, in life, you're not going to get rid of 100%, but what if you could, in the moment, notice it, interrupt it, and replace it? We go through all of that in AHA Mentoring, and tonight what we're going to do is look at those values that give you the how and the why that can encourage you to stay the path. So, how do you begin to define your values? We're going to go through step by step by step. Now, the good news is, for every, all of these steps, everyone that's registered, you'll get an email with these steps so that you don't have to write everything down on the steps. I simply want you to start getting this in your heart and in your mind. Remember, your mind is what drives your brain. So in your mind, in your heart, start hearing this message. And then when you get the notes um, tomorrow, you can begin to actually go through the process. So I want you to understand the process tonight. The first step is to look at lists for ideas of what can values look like? What, what, what words would even describe values? We're going to do this tonight and here's what's really key. Let go of the shoulds. Let go of what you think are the right values or the better values or if I'm such and such a person, I need to have these values. 
set all that aside. As we go through this list here and you look at it and when it's in your hands, what captures your attention? What causes your heart to go pitter-patter? And it's like, oh, that's me. I like that. And for right now, don't limit it. If you come up with 20 or 30, that's okay. Right now we're exploring. It's like going into a store, if this happens to work for you, and, and trying on things to see if you even like it. Or trying new foods or going on different hikes. This is simply a discovery process. And there's lots of lists out there. The one I've got tonight is certainly not the end all, but it's a starting place. And it's in alphabetical order, and it's got description after the words to help explain the possibility of any of these values. And you certainly don't have to limit to this list, nor the definitions or descriptive words after it. But if we take, for example, cooperation, this would be a, a value that has to do with teamwork, collaborating, getting along with other people. That's somewhat similar to teamwork. Or, um, collaboration. So part of it is if you see, well there's, gee, there's several of these I like. Put them together because over a period of time you'll see that they start landing in groups. And that's okay because you can actually have a family of values and then we're going to name it. But that's a little bit later down the road. You know, excellence. Maybe you really like to be the best. You know, that's a, that's a great value. It doesn't mean it's proud or arrogant. It's just you really like to do your best and to master something, to be outstanding in whatever you do. Maybe you really like freedom. You don't, you know, you you enjoy being on your own and creating things on your own and instead of necessarily being on a team. Or what you may notice is pleasure or fun is really something you enjoy. I think I did I miss one? Yes. Uh, let's go back to the second because there's three pages here. Um, friendship. That might go with relationships or being able to do things with other people. Um, health. That could be your physical health, fitness, mental health, emotional health, financial health. Remember, you're doing the defining and you're picking the values that work for you. Maybe it's order. Maybe it's not so much having everything in its place, but maybe you simply like tranquility and, and having peace in your home. Peace and order, not necessarily the same. Peace can really go with, you just don't like to have a lot of conflict going on. Now, how would that look different than being a people pleaser? Good questions. Um, you know, recognition, being able to have respect and to be acknowledged. You know what? If that's a value to you and you don't acknowledge it, by default, you'll use inappropriate behavior to get attention. Think of that little kid in school. If, if recognition is his or her value, they're not getting it at home, then they go to school and they act up so that they can get attention to fill the whole of that value. So sometimes inappropriate behavior in our children, our spouses, for us, it's coming from a value that's being hidden away, ignored, and, not, and we don't pay any attention to it. You know, maybe travel is really important to you, having adventures, doing new things. Well, as much as I enjoy climbing Pikes Peak, skydiving, the next one is paragliding, that will happen in the next year. As much as I enjoy that, it's not a value, it's just something I enjoy. So as you're going through this list, or you go out and Google, there's lots and lots and lots of lists. You know, play with words. Begin to identify the ones that capture your attention. Write them down. No specific order right now, just write them down. But step two, we're going to expand the list. Think of the very various roles in your life. Maybe you're a spouse, a parent, um, a son or daughter. Maybe your parents are still living. Uh, look at the role of being having a boss or you're the boss or being part of a team, or in a choir, or part of a church, or part of a, a volunteer organization. There's many roles that you play in your life. Are there values that you hold near and dear in those different roles? If so, write them down. Step three, how do you spend your time and money? This one was actually interesting to me because when I looked at it, clearly I spend time and money on learning. 
I buy books, I go to seminars, I study. Learning has been a pattern in my life from early, early years. I remember a goal of wanting to read every book in our local library. Didn't quite make it. But clearly that reflected a value of learning. You know, what about you? Do you spend money on movies? So then maybe being entertainment has value to you. Don't discount that. Or maybe you really like to go out to fine dining. So maybe there's something about either entertainment or food or adventure. See if you can add to your list based on how you spend or invest. Those of you from more than enough know there's a difference between spending time and money. So how do you use your time and money? What values might show up there? Step four. Think of some of your most favorite experiences. Maybe something that happened in school or in your 20s or with your family. Their favorite memories, they bring a smile to your face. Did that reflect a value? Or maybe at the peak of your success at a certain point in time, a career success. You know, for me, I remember the excitement of every single book that I wrote when I opened up the pages of the first book of that printing. Those were like little babies. Um, that reflects something of my values. And what about some of your most fulfilling experiences? You know, when I get the feedback from the people that have gone through the webinar, and, and I would share that on the webinars, that, you know, here's feedback from somebody. Those really nourish me, and they reflect part of my values. So notice from your memories and experiences, are there other values? Write them down. And as you're going through the process, talk to other people. Because what I've learned over the years is that as I get to know people, their values are really obvious. And I'm going to share about that in a little bit. So, step five. You've gotten your values from lots of different places, from lists, from um, your roles. You've gotten you know, your values from how you use time and money, different experiences. You've written them all down. Now start grouping your values. Do any of them sort of cluster together as being similar? Not quite the same, but similar. Start putting them in little families. And out of that, are there five to ten values that really matter to you? I'm going to really encourage you to get it down to five. It can be five families, but these really matter. And here's the good news. They can change. This is all being done in the eraser, so you can change as you discover more and more about yourself. Now, once you've identified the values, put them in a group, named them, now describe them. And I'm going to walk through some examples in a little bit, so don't get concerned. I just want you to understand the process. So describe in words that mean something to you so that you can get more and more clarity on this value because, listen, folks, what you're doing is you're defining your how and your why, which defines you. So allow yourself to take time on this. Allow yourself to change it. Don't judge it. But here's what I can promise. I've seen it over and over and over and over over many years. The more clarity you get on your values, all of a sudden you understand how you're wired to be effective and significant. Not on shoulds and not on hard willpower, not on no pain, no gain thinking. This is about being able to let all this come out of your heart and open up that view so that you're not just constantly reacting and trying to use willpower to break down that invisible wall. You're just walking in to those dreams and desires. Completely different pathways. So you've described it. You're going to prioritize it. And again, share with others. And I will say that if you really struggle with this, this is a great activity to do with a coach. Because a coach can help you clarify it a little more quickly. Totally up to you. Sharing it with others. Get feedback. I'm going to share some stories on that in just a moment. So, love those hands. Spanning the decades. In the next X number of years, do you really want to create what matters to you? Whether it's 10 years, 30 years, 60 years? It's possible. God didn't put those dreams and desires, that purpose and calling in your heart with no way out. He 
be put that in your heart so that what you value most, your values can let it come out and impact your brain and reprogram the RAS because you know what? None of us had perfect parents. None of us had a perfect family. And even if we had, it was our interpretation of what they did or said that impacted our brain. So whatever it is, it got programmed. We can change that by really connecting with what's in our heart and what we most value. And we can create in that next 10, 20, 30, 50, 60 years what truly matters to us. So I think I've said it, but I want to make sure I re reiterate it because this is like having a front row seat into your brain, this massive computer. You see, our brain is like a computer, more effective and bigger than any computer man's made, but it is a computer and it drives every bit of our physiology, every bit of it. Unfortunately, so much of it has been programmed and we're not aware of it. But as you gather that awareness and you get clarity on your values and you start living by your values, the aha mentoring gives you the process to go through so you can start to bring alignment. Let it be easy, not hard. Learn how to take baby steps because that's what allows your RAS to incorporate this. As you start living your values, your values begin to change your RAS. And now your RAS protects your values. So you're not fighting yourself. You're not hitting that invisible wall day after day after day. You actually get your values and your RAS combined. Now here's the scripture for that. When we're double-minded, we're unstable in all of our ways. And that double-minded is when our heart and our brain are on two different pages. And unfortunately, when our heart and brain are on two different pages, the brain trumps the heart. Our default programming, 95% of our choices and behavior trump all the values, all the dreams, and all the desires, and we're not stable, and we're not creating what matters to us. But we can change that as we get clarity on our values, the values that come from our heart, not our brain, those values, and we start to live them, we start coming into alignment and congruency, the game changes. The game totally changes. And when I watch that happen with coaching clients or health clients or friends or family, it is absolutely exciting. It's like watching dreams come together in front of your eyes. It's like watching someone's purpose um, and their whole reason for being alive on this planet just blossom. It, it, it's very exciting to me. Clearly you're getting an insight into one of my values. Well, let's talk about some things that values are and aren't so you can have some stories to help understand it. Well, very, very early on, clearly giving was one of my values. I remember the dress on the, on the right. It's not quite the same, but it's real similar. I really, really, really wanted to give my mom a gift. I was maybe five or six years old and I didn't get an allowance. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any way to go buy anything. But I knew her favorite dress. So I went into her closet when she wasn't there. I went and got this dress. I put it in a box and I wrapped it up. I have no idea how the wrapping turned out. But then there was a problem. Dad said that there was an office party to go to before Christmas, and she wanted to wear her favorite dress. Now I had a problem. Did I lie to her and tell her I didn't know where it was at and give up and, and be able to give, or did I give up my desire to give and be honest? Oh, that was tough. That was really tough. It was really tough. You want to know what I did? Oh, just leave it to your imagination. Well, years and years later, when Forrest and I had gone through a really, really difficult time, so Anna was quite young, and, and people had blessed us with food and cars and gas and helping us move, and, and as the holiday season came along, I really wanted to thank and bless the people who had blessed us all year. So I asked Forrest if he was okay with it, and he said, sure, no problem. Well, being Cheryl, I made a list. It was 300 people. 
I went back to Forrest and he said, we don't even know 300 people. Why are you going to do that? And I said, well, if I give something to the mom, I, I, it would be good to include the father and the kids or the whole family. And so by the time I added up all the kids, and it seems like most people we know have lots of kids, it's 300 people. Well, interestingly enough, for is it fine. If you can get money, you go do whatever you want. So that to me was creativity because giving is one of my values. So I said, God, how can I possibly do that? What came up was a friend had a daughter getting married, and she offered to pay me $300 to make the wedding dress. That $300 with a lot of resourcefulness and creativity was the seed for 300 gifts to be able to give and thoroughly enjoy it. So values can appear very early on in your life. They may have gotten forgotten, but they have been there for a long time. And sometimes they're the seed to be able to do so much more. So go back and think about things that were important that line up with values. Giving has been a value that I've known for years and years and years. Now, within that value, I had immaturity for years. Many times I would use that giving to either manipulate or feel good enough or actually cripple people. So I've learned how to live the value from a place of maturity, to grow in that. I know I have more to learn, but I've come a long ways. So just because you have a value doesn't mean that you know how to operate in it maturely. Still is important to you. It's learning how to grow in it. Well, let's take another situation. This shows up a lot with Christian leaders, um, people in church. When you ask them their values, they'll start listing faith and tithing, and there'll be a list like that. So let's just take the, the value of, of faith. I was talking to someone about that just this past week, and she said, well, that's uh, one of my values. And, and I said, and what would cause you to say that? And she said, well, you know, whenever a situation comes up, I know I have the gift of faith to believe for what needs to happen there. And I said, well, let's, let's just hypothetically say that that's a gift of faith because it comes easily to you. What would be a value? And as we mo talked more and more, part of a coaching process, what, one of the comments that she said is, I love to celebrate life and people. And as soon as she said that, I said, pay attention to that. Your, your whole voice lit up. We were just on the phone. I couldn't see her eyes, but her voice changed. Her voice lit up. That's the power of coaching and a coach who listens because you'll give yourself away all the time, and the coach can help you hear and reflect back what you've said and how you said it. And once she started looking at celebrating people, well, she's a pregnancy advocate, so women who are pregnant, she's an advocate, she's a medulla, she works with midwives. She celebrates people, she honors people. Clearly, this is an amazing value, and it describes her so well. That wasn't even on the list that I gave you, on purpose, because part of discovering your values is discovering what resonates and lights you up. So that's a great one. <laughs> Get ready for the next one. Yes, this would be one of Forrest. And this is one that he just thought it wasn't a good value. It wasn't an important value. But what is for what do you just know Forrest will do when he shows up before the, these recordings? He's over here having fun, being on camera, doing all kinds of what I would consider goofy things. But what does it do for you? You end up laughing. And when I'm not upset and in my Raz mindset, his fun is pretty funny, and it gives me a laugh. And you know what? In a family, in a marriage, you're not going to have the same values because you wouldn't complement each other. So for a fun is a great complement to some of my values. So if fun is important to you, let it be there. I remember someone I was coaching, and she was going through her list, and she had health on there. And I said, well, what causes you to think that health is one of your values? So that's really important. And I said, but none of your behavior that you've talked about in our coaching sessions indicate this is a value. It sounds more like a should, because you really don't like to exercise. You really don't like to look at what you eat. You really don't want any discipline in any of those areas, so are you sure health is a value? Well, the more we talked, 
the more she had clarity that fun is a value. And I said, well, what if you went through the door of fun to produce health? She said, oh, that would be easy. I would go with my friends. We'd go to the gym. We'd go to a class. Then we'd go out and have fun afterwards. I could do that. That wouldn't be hard at all. So here's another key. You can let your values open the door to what you want to create. Health wasn't her value. And when she tried to make it her value, it was hard. It didn't happen. Then she felt bad about herself, and she got into a loop and a downward spiral. So, get past the shoulds and let your values reflect your heart. Now, as you start getting clarity on your values, the values from your heart, and then you look at the things that trigger you, just be aware. At any point in time, you can choose where you go. Don't judge you. Don't judge your identity, don't judge your purpose, don't judge your significance. Now we have something to look at and decide, are we going to go to the left or are we going to go to the right? You know, in AHA Mentoring, we talk about how to get neutral so you can decide whether to go forward, backward, left, or right. Because if you're in the garage, going in reverse is good. If you're out on the interstate, going forward is good. So when you get neutral, not about your identity, but just neutral on behavior and choices and decisions is the RAS and your triggers operating or your values. Just notice and realize you have a choice. So I'm going to share a couple of stories and, and we've just got a few more minutes, so hang in there. Forrest actually asked me to share this. He said, I'm sure there's going to be somebody out there that's going to be more like me in this area than like you. He said, you know, I, I just really have resented value exercises. I never wanted to do it, never made sense to me. All the values look like they should be important, so how was I supposed to pick a few? It just didn't work. So because I couldn't understand it, because it looked hard, because I had no clarity, I just didn't bother. And when I started talking about doing this class, a little bit of that resentment started to rise up. But here's what he said. This bottom part is pretty much his words. He said, I finally got tired of looping. You know, I'm 60 and I didn't want certain things to loop. There's certain areas of his life, then for his life, that's doing incredibly well. But there was this other area that was just looping. And it didn't matter how hard he tried. It didn't matter what he was doing. There was this looping pattern, great frustration, just like that little guy in the beginning sitting there going, why can't I create what matters to me? So we started talking about values. And he said, I don't know my values. And I said, Forrest, there's one that's so obvious. And he said, well, I don't know what it is. And I said, well, what really matters to you? And as we talked, within just a few minutes, family. Family matters to Forrest. Even though there were challenges in his growing up family, Anna and me, we matter to Forrest. He is stuck in with us through thick and thin for 30 years. And before Anna was born, we had boy and girl names picked out, and the girl was either to be Anna Stephanie or Anna Foray. Foray was a name I made up to reflect Forrest. Well, he thought that was about the dumbest name he had ever heard. Anna Stephanie made so much more sense because people would know that name. But you know what? When Anna was born, his daughter, she was Anna Foray, and he would take her through restaurants and wait for people to admire her. Why? Because family is important. When he got honest about fun, it was like, he does like to have fun. Forrest doesn't want to go through life being serious. He wants to have fun. When he looked at recognition, at first he thought maybe that's what drove him. And the more we explored it, he realized it's not recognition on stage. It's knowing that my life has significance. And as Forrest has been getting clarity on his values and writing him on writing them on his great big whiteboard. He said it's amazing how that's helping him. Listen to this, folks. It's helping him with his decisions and his choices day in and day out. And he's liking him more. Why? Listen to this. This is so important. The reason is he's liking himself more is the real forest is showing up in those values, not all the programs that he didn't even know got programmed in early on. 
and the clarity of values is helping him change the default behavior. He's liking himself more, and he's not looping in those areas like he did in the past. It's a, been a process. He's gone through the aha more than enough. And I've watched Forrest not just go through that, but totally engage in the process. He's helping me with the PowerPoint, but he's engaging in the learning process. And the values piece just brought it all together. If this series was only done to produce that kind of fruit in my husband, that's changed my life forever. What if the values, the aha, and the more than enough could help you produce that kind of fruit, total alignment with your heart, so you could do what you were created to do, be the person you were created to be, and learn to love you. As you're going to see in my values, that's totally what drives me. You know, some of my values I've, I've known for a while, but every time I go through this process, I bring a little more clarity to it. Wisdom is clearly my number one value. And for me, that means being able to understand and apply God's principle in life in real time. Not just because it was written on the pages of the Bible, but because it's written on the, on the tablet of my heart, and it just rises up. Being able to ask questions. In any situation, what's a question I can ask? Who would be a wise person to ask it of? Learning, just, it, I love to learn. I love to learn, you know, in the area of health, or cooking, or in design, or in how the brain functions, or what causes people to do the things they do. It, it means to me to be teachable, and to have balance in my life. So wisdom is a big one for me. Integrity, oh, keeping commitments. If I say I'm going to do something, that's what I'm going to do. And that's part of how I assess other people. I notice, do they keep their commitments? Because that value is important to me. It's also the stewardship. You know, I was playing around with that stewardship because it's important because we've leased, owned, rented homes. If we're leasing or renting, I want that home to be in better condition than when I moved in. That's a stewardship issue. If I borrow someone's car, uh, I want it to be in better condition when I return it. That's stewardship. To me, that's integrity. That's also where I could help. Why do I exercise four to six times a week? Why do I choose the food that I do? It's integrity to keep the commitment of being my best. So health isn't my value, but it's part of integrity. Giving, uh, it's an opportunity to be generous. But in the past, when it didn't have maturity, because I didn't have financial stewardship, well, it didn't always impact people the best. But as I brought financial stewardship into my life, it can show up as hospitality, as gifts, as being anonymous. Giving matters to me. And number four, I don't even know if this is the right order, because these four are so close for me. Results and fruit. Now, in more than enough mentoring series, we talk that there's a difference between getting results and fruit. Fruit has the ability to multiply and multiply and multiply. It's a 30, 60, 100 fold versus you completed something. Neither one are good or bad, they're just different. You know, for me to do these webinars and there'd be no fruit in somebody's life, I, that doesn't matter to me. I, stage isn't what matters to me. Fame is not what matters to me. What matters is seeing lives change and going out and touching other lives and other lives. When clients come back and share breakthroughs and, and results, oh, that matters to me. It's like it nourishes my soul. It nourishes my heart to give me more energy to be my best. So as you find clarity in your values, is there a gap between where you are and where you'd like to be? That's okay, because there's a way to address that. You know, I've been talking about AHA Mentoring. And AHA Mentoring is, it's a, a series of eight seminars or webinars. And it helps you learn how to take baby steps. Because baby steps is when you look at something and your RAS goes, I can do that. That's not a problem. So the RAS doesn't go into red alert and it starts to adapt and grow. That's the beginning of programming your RAS to match up with your values. It's those, the AHA mentoring is designed to help you have a, ah, 
and those are the suddenlies that you don't have to take 10 years to create. They happen in an instant and they will completely change how you're doing things. And throughout the whole process, it's how can you let it be easy? What's the one thing? Bringing clarity. And the result is a life of significance. That's what AHA mentoring is all about. Now, here's one of the things we're going to do for you. <laughs> because what's one of my values? Giving and being able to produce good fruit. Because I, I'm going to do two things. One is totally free, and one's an investment in you to go through the process. Both work, whatever is important to you. If you decide to go through the process, if you click on AHA Mentoring on our website, so go to lifestyleforhealth.com, click on the button on the home page that says AHA Mentoring, and if you do that tonight or in the morning, there's a special price that's unbelievably low. And if you even have to do payments, we'll do that. But it's at such a good price that I'm pretty sure most of you can do it. Special pricing only for those of you who are on live tonight. So if you're on tonight, you have tonight and first thing in the morning to take care of that. Oh, um, I'm going to give you the coupon code at the end. Okay, the coupon code in order to get the discount is my values, all uppercase, no, just, regular. just my values, doesn't matter what case. So, that'll, be, that'll be up through tomorrow. That'll be up through tomorrow. So click on AHA Mentoring on the home page of our website. And when you get, uh, I'll give you some more of the details at the end, but the code is my values. So that's one gift. Now, in addition to that, because some of you have been through AHA Mentoring, this is what we're going to do for the next two weeks. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is a teleconference, and what we're going to do is to do 30-minute coaching sessions and helping you to clarify values and answer questions. So mark your calendars, August 12th, August 19th. As of right now, there won't be a replay. If we can change that, we will. So this is designed to be live. August 12th, August 19th, same time. You can see the number to call. 805-399-1000, that's a typo, so 805-399-1000, you can see the access code is 294-280-POUND, and there's a backup number, which you shouldn't need at that time of night, but if you need it, 951-262-7373, so that's for everybody, but for two of you, Oh, it gets even better. Love, love, love to give. So the next thing is whoever between now and Friday sends me the most interesting question about values or about the AHA series if you've been through it, the most interesting question that gets emailed to me by the 8th, that person will get a free coaching session and you'll be one of the people that helps me with the call that we do on either the 12th or the 19th. And then Anybody that has been through or chooses to go through AHA Mentoring Now will be part of a drawing, and we will randomly draw that person. Okay, what was one of my values? Integrity. That doesn't mean that I'm going to go through the list and pick my favorite person. It will be 100% random. Yeah. Forrest won't get to pick the person. Cheryl will randomly pick the person. So if you've already gone through AHA, you're automatically in the drawing. If you go through and, and um, participate and register tonight or tomorrow on the AHA Mentoring, you'll be a part of that list. So, two ways to be one of the people selected for coaching. And I want you to know that the value of a coaching session is $250. Three for two people. One, the person who has the most interesting question. And two, a person out of a random drawing. So, email your question to me at CT for Cheryl Townsley at lifestyleforhealth.com. Now, there's just there's so much going on, and I'm so excited about this new season. There's things we're doing on YouTube, on Facebook, um, a whole lot of other things that we have planned, and I don't want you to miss out on any of it. So here's how we can stay connected. On Facebook, there's the Cheryl Townsley. That's the public page that you can go like. That's where notifications occur recipes, encouragement, uh, the blogs get posted there. I don't do a lot as far as you know, like 10 things a day. It's usually about one a day. So that's one way. 
leave messages, love your feedback, share. Second is the Cheryl Townsley TV.com YouTube channel. There's about 20 videos out there now. And over the coming months, my, my desire is to have multiple channels, various topics, and up to two or three hundred videos that are just in that three minute time frame. Simple ideas, simple strategies to help you live your very best life. And if you've never subscribed to our newsletter, I'd suggest you do that. Also on the home page, I've talked about wisdom coaching. There's information on the web page, and I'll be glad to help you with that. That's when you want to apply these principles on a specific issue for a very specific period of time to produce certain fruit. It's when you want to accelerate the process. And together, we're creating our very best life. That's what significance is, and that's what you can do. Connect your values. Express who you are in your life. Let that RAS come under the authority of your values, and you can be your very best you.